All right. Hi, this is Joette with BalloonCoach.com, and I am so glad that you guys are here with me tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I believe every balloon professional should know, the behind the scenes of an event. And if you haven't met me yet, I'm Joette Giardina. I'm a certified balloon artist. I'm a mentor, motivator, and speaker. My company is BalloonCoach.com, and I'm here to help you succeed. So just one final question. I do want to make sure that everybody's seeing one big slide up on the um, computer this evening and you're not seeing all my extra notes like double slides so that we're ready to go. Awesome. Yay. All right. So behind the scenes of events, here's what I find in the balloon industry. There is a variety of reasons why people are in the industry and what they do. We have people who are entertainers and they show up at the event and they are just there to be on stage, bring smiles and interact with the audience. Then we have people who are decorators where they create decor, bring it in and lots of times just let somebody else set it up. And then we have people who provide full event decor where they tend to find out a little bit more about the client, a little bit more about the event, and spend more time at the venue setting things up. What I have found is no matter what part of that you want to do, whether it's just that you're doing the decor and letting it get there and you don't have to fiddle with anything else, or if you're just the entertainer, I have found that the more that you want to increase your sales, and increase the type of clientele you work with, you need to know and understand more about the behind the scenes actions of what happens behind an event. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight, is kind of take you on a little bit of a journey, of my journey as um, party people since 2003 in the balloon industry, and how I work with my clients and what's worked for me to build my clientele base, to go from having things where they're like, oh, $100 for balloons, ugh, to here's $10,000. And it's not something that happens overnight, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of what worked for me so that you as a balloon professional can increase your knowledge and increase your understanding of where your clients are coming from and what's going on with the full effect of the event. So hopefully we're on the right webinar together and that's what you guys are looking for. So again, throughout the evening, if those of you who are online have a question, feel free to type it into the chat and here we go. So here's the disclaimer. I'm sharing with you what's worked for me and of what I've seen help other balloon professionals around the world. I want you to apply the parts that make sense to you. If you want to grow your business, okay? If you want your business to grow from where you are now to another level, you have to grow too. You can't just keep doing what you're doing now unless your business is already going at the rate that you want it. If you're wanting increased sales, increased customers, customers who spend more money, then something with you has to grow and change. And so tonight I hope to just give you a few pieces of information that will help you do that. Remember, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. I know so many people that get into the industry as a hobby or an interest and just does it a little bit on the side. And they want to go from $500 a week to $2,000 a week overnight, and it takes a little bit of time. So I really want to encourage people that no matter where you're at, understand that the more time and effort you put into the business and the more knowledge you gain, the more you're going to grow. All right. So your business is not going to change until you change what you're doing. Okay. And sometimes that's really hard. Because we get into a situation, we may have been in the industry 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Or maybe we're brand new and we just don't like change. Okay? But if you want your business to change, the dynamic of how it is set up, 
then you have to do some changing and some learning and some growing. So if you're one of those people that say, people won't pay those types of prices in my area, you know what? You're right. If you say people will pay for amazing service and beautiful decor in your hometown, then you know what? You're right. Now, those are complete opposites. But here's the thing you have the power to create the business that you want. It's based on your mindset, your training, and the actions that you take. I am such a huge cheerleader for mindset. And that is, there are some people in the world who have a lack mindset. They feel like there is only so much out there and that they've got to grab it all for themselves and nobody else can have it. And that there's not enough to go around. That's not the mindset that I choose to have. I have a mindset of abundance because I've seen it happen time and time again. The balloon industry is booming. This is the right time to be in the balloon industry because social media has it where everyone wants balloons and they want amazing balloons. Okay. So if you have the mindset that you're going to have the customers that are going to call you that want to pay a profitable price for what you're doing, those people will contact you. But there's a few steps that you've got to go through to make that happen. All right. In training, it is so important for you to go get training, <laughs> whether it's online or in person or both. Training is going to help you get there. And then action. That's those daily steps, the things that you do every day to maintain your business. So now we're going to go ahead and dive in a little bit about this fun concept I have. We don't know what we don't know. All right. This happens a lot with our customers. Our customers call us and they say, oh, I saw that 30 foot balloon arch that you did at the walk the other day. And I'd like to have that at my house for my daughter's birthday party. Oh, and I want the castle and I would want 200 balloons from the ceiling and I'd like a balloon drop and da, 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 and they keep going on and on. And then they say, um, yeah, and I have $200 to spend. Will that work? And we get offended. But you know what? They don't know what they don't know. They have no idea what the cost is of balloon decor unless you put up your pricing. So you can't get offended. <laughs> the other part of that is that when you're working with people who live in large houses or are using really nice high-end venues, sometimes you don't know a lot of things about that venue or about the costs that are associated in it. So the more time that you take to learn, the more you're going to know, and the easier it's going to be for you to educate your client. In this journey of being a business owner and working in the events industry, it takes time to learn these things and turn from not knowing to knowing. So that's something I talk about a lot of times with my clients that do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me is they call me and they have a problem and I'm able to answer it right away because I've gone through an experience that relates to what they're going through and I can answer it for them. Well, the same thing with our clients. When our clients call and they ask us for something, it's our turn to educate them and help them out. But we have to educate ourselves first. So I hope that's making sense. All right. So you have to remember, we have all had different experiences in our lives. Our clients, the venue owners that we work with, the other businesses that we come in contact with when we're doing events, we've all had different life experiences and we all have different levels of expectations. So I believe that when you're going from being a hobbyist in the balloon industry to a balloon decorator and then becoming a balloon professional, it's not about the letters that we put behind our name or what classes we attend online or in person. What makes the difference of becoming a true professional in our industry is the time we invest and in learning about the events industry, not just focusing on balloons, but understanding all the other parts of our industry, like rental companies, 
What does it cost for those chairs and those tables? What's it cost for the linens? What does it cost for the lighting? What does it cost for the venue to be rented? What does it cost for the food that's happening there? All right. Learning these things to some people may sound like it's very overwhelming. But what I found is the more that I had life experiences dealing with different venues and dealing with different vendors, the more my eyes were opened up to the experiences that my clients go through and it allowed me to relate with them better. It also really helped me have confidence in pricing because when I found out just to be able to plug something into something was $250 at the expo that I was doing a 30 foot balloon arch. Now me pricing something at $350 to $500 just seems like a little drop in the bucket when just to plug something in costs 250 bucks. That is a real number, by the way. When you get called by a corporation to go set something up for them when they're doing like a trade show booth, the electric in exhibit halls can go anywhere from $25 to I've heard up to $700 to plug in to an outlet. Okay, so when you start finding out about those kind of numbers, you realize, holy cow, my balloon arch does not sound that expensive. So that has really helped me gain perspective and know where my clients are coming from when a corporate person from Colorado is calling me to do an expo here in Florida. All right, the next thing I want to do is talk to you about sometimes we have to make sure we learn to fish in the right ponds. Okay, or I can think about it for my dad was a saltwater fisherman. He loved to go take his boat out and go deep sea fishing in the Gulf. Now he had a fish finder and he would use that and he would talk to other people who also went fishing to find out where they had had good luck. And so rather than just going and haphazardly driving out on the Gulf, it's a pretty big place, he would take his fish finder and put in a certain area to go to and then take his course to that place before he went fishing. And he had certain spots that he would fish for sharks and certain place for grouper and all these different things. He would have that information that he kept. Now, if I went out in my um, subdivision and went down the road to the local pond and threw my fishing pole into the pond expecting to catch a shark, I'd be fishing in the wrong pond, okay? And many times I found in the balloon industry, so many of us, due to comfort, we try to fish in the pond of our neighborhood and our friends and the people around us, not realizing that those people typically are not our customers. I know I'm personally not my customer. <laughs> I'm not a person that ever spent a ton of money on my daughter's birthday. Now, I did spend money um, sometimes to help support other businesses like a baker uh, for my daughter's cake. And then I made my own decor because I was a balloon lady. <laughs> but I probably was not going to actually go out and hire party people if I didn't own the company for all of her parties. Okay. So I want to make sure that I go fish in the pond where there's the people who are going to pay the amount of money I'm asking for my decor. Hope that makes sense. We need to make sure that we build ourselves up as people and business owners and designers so that as we're trying to get back in with the people with big pocketbooks, that we are able to talk the talk, walk the walk, and provide an amazing product that they're expecting that's going to hold up and give them excellent customer service. We have the power to create the business that we wish to have, but we've got to tie these things together. So, I want to give you just a quick background on me so that you kind of understand where I'm coming from when I talk to my clients. So many times people will get a phone call with a price quote and they'll just say, the person will ring, ring, hello, I'd like to know how much your balloon arch is. Okay, that's $250. Oh, $250, that's too much. Okay, bye. And hang up the phone. At that point, you've not done anything to build a relationship with that person or to connect with them and understand what their situation is. My background is I have a degree in recreation and leisure studies. That's outdoor education where we used to go rappelling, rock climbing, 
I would have corporate groups come and do team building where they do the trust falls and we would facilitate that conversation of, hey, how did that make you feel when they caught you? And were you scared? Did you face your fear? Now your team's there to support you and facilitate through all that. But part of that degree was I learned how to manage like a parks and rec department or a camp. I understood with working in outdoor education how important it is to weigh risk and safety. And so my head is always thinking about those things when I walk into an venue and a client says, hey, Joette, we want you to do blah, blah, blah. I can go, hmm, that's going to block an exit. So we can't do that, but here, let me give you an alternative. So sometimes, again, our life experiences are going to help us see things in a different way. And if you're a person who is just a balloon inflator, and you're handing balloons to people, you're not able to provide as much service when you can really actually kind of look at the space and know what it needs. I hope that's making sense. So the other things that I've done in my life is worked with adults with mental retardation, um, with learning disabilities, and helped create training for them to be able to have work skills and independent living skills. I was an activities director for a nursing home. I was a salesperson for Geico Insurance for about a year and a half. I learned a lot about sales and price objections. I was a case manager then again for adults with learning disabilities. I got really burnt out on that and not being able to get the access to the resources I needed for my clients. And so luckily in 2003, I bought party people. And I have been full-time in balloons since 2003. I got to create amazing balloon decor and fabric decor for some amazing clients. And over time, I found with my skill set that it was really good for me to, from time to time, coordinate for corporate events and mitzvahs. So I wanted you to kind of understand a little bit about my background. I'm kind of a touchy-feely person. I like to help people out. I like to meet their needs and help them get what they want. So I think that type of personality has helped me with the setup because I'm able to reach out and help people when they need help and ask questions rather than just selling them a balloon. So I hope that makes sense. All right. So the first thing I want you guys to do is I want to put you in the shoes of your customer. Put yourself in their shoes because there might be just a little bit more to the story than you realize. So many times when a client calls us for a quote, we sometimes are busy and we just want to give them a number and go on rather than finding out a little bit about their story and a little bit about what is going on. So I want you to step up and be able to help your client out, okay? I learned the importance of putting myself in their shoes because there were times when I would go to rent a facility <laughs> and I think I got a little bit in shock of how much it did cost for the overhead and the deposit and the extra staff to let me in an hour or two early. So if you have not done that yet, find out about the venues and the places in your area so you know what your client is going through. So many of the balloon industry focus a lot of their time on trying to perfect the next technique or artistic design, like double stuffing and distorting balloons um, to try to get that to a big pay payday. However, I have found that for me, many of those techniques are not easy to duplicate. So I was not able to train a staff member on how to do all those advanced techniques making it where I wouldn't be able to increase my income. What I found for me is that focusing on classic decor done well and listening to my clients' needs allowed me to expand my client base, okay? So what I'm saying is so many times I hear people at conventions going, I want a more advanced class. I want to be able to learn how to triple stuff and double stuff and distort this and make it look like a body. And I want to understand this because I think it's going to make me more money. Now, please understand, there are some very amazing gifted artists in our industry that do a phenomenal job of creating decor and they've been able to get a client base who will pay 
wonderful amounts of money for works of art. However, across the board, when I talk to balloon people and I ask them about what their bread and butter is and I find out what their numbers are, how much money they're bringing in every year, and seeing if they live in a nice house or not, <laughs> seeing if they're still living with their parents because they can't afford a house. And for the people that I see that are building their companies with a solid foundation to have an income that can be a real life income to live off of, the thing that they all have in common is classic decor done really well, often and with people who want to pay good for it and pay for lots of it. Now, please understand you can always add other little things into it. And yes, having a twisted flower on top of your green column that's supposed to look like part of a garden can add value and money. But I just want people to understand that what I have found that works really great for us here in Central Florida is for us to do great classic decor over and over again and then add some extra fun to it from time to time for some of our bigger projects. All right. So, I have a question I talked to you about putting yourself in your customer's shoes. This is where you get to interact and give me a question or um, answer. What would happen if you tried to deliver six sets of these three balloons on a string in a golf cart on a windy day? What would happen to the balloons? All right, thank you, Chatal. They would get all tangled. All right, welcome to Florida Southern College. This was a college that was an account that the previous owner of my company already had. And when I first met them, they were getting two balloons on a string, okay? One red, one white for all the events they did indoors and for their signs. They always ordered two balloons on a string, one red, one white, and they would put them on these signs. And I talked to him and I said, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what you're doing with the balloons I'm giving you? Because when I first started doing it, I didn't time onto the signs form, they did it. And they said, oh my goodness, you know, we just don't know about these balloons. When we get them from you, they get all tangled up and we have a mess. I'm like, well, what do you mean? They're like, well, when we get the balloons from you, we, we used to blow them up ourselves and then we would drive them around on our golf cart and they'd be a tangled mess and we hated working with them. And I said, you know what? I can solve that problem for you. Number one, it's going to look nicer when people are coming in to see the campus if we had three balloons. Let's do two red and a white. We'll add that together. I'll go around when I get onto campus. I'll put them all out on the signs for you before I go in to decorate for the event. How does that sound? They were thrilled. They were so excited that I took a moment to listen to their frustration, find out about their situation, and offer them a solution. Okay? Now, if I would have just said, you just want two balloons on a string six times, that's not a big enough order. I don't want to do that. I would not have the account that we have today with them, okay? So by taking time to find out a little bit about their story, I was able to solve a problem, and I also was able to increase what they were doing even though it was by one balloon, but when we do this repeatedly, month after month, year after year, it adds up. All right, so when I got onto the campus, I would find out, well, what activities do you all have going on? What areas do you need us to decorate? And it used to be that they just wanted the red and white healing balloons. And then I said, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we wrote Go Mocks? As these students are walking into the cafeteria, wouldn't that give them school spirit and make them feel great? Yes, it would. Awesome, they're just $25 a letter, plus our setup and delivery, and everything else that goes on with it. So we went from doing basic red and white string of pearl arches and simple balloons throughout to doing deliveries like this on a regular basis. I then started talking to them about Topiaries, rather than doing the healing balloons on a string, why don't we do these beautiful topiaries where we can put ribbon down on them? 
when you're having your event, this typically is an event that happens at a tent, okay? We would put these on the tent poles. This actual weekend, it rained. But because I knew their venue, I was able to suggest how we could bring those items inside and still use it and make it look amazing. Here's the thing. I took time to go for a walk on the campus when I first got this account. I asked for a walking tour and I went to the different buildings that they held activities at and I found out more about what their needs were and what their programs were. When we originally had this account, again, two balloons on a string rather than three, and they didn't do any kind of arch at the entrance. So then I said, hey, how about this? We can try this out. And this was back when linking balloons was, um, I hadn't used them very much and I wanted to give it a try. And they're like, sure, go for it. It increased the value of that account because I took the time to say, hey, wouldn't it be wonderful as, as the parents and the students are coming onto campus, as when they come into the gym, they walked under an arch that they felt really special and greeted? Oh yeah, Joette, that'd be great. And I'm just gonna go off topic for a second. You often ask if um, high float is used on every helium job as a decorator. My answer is no. <laughs> this job always gets set up usually around eight o'clock in the morning, is done by two o'clock in the afternoon, or we set it up by noon and it's done by five. The balloons are not needed anywhere on campus. There's nowhere else that we can take them to. So we just come back at the end of the event and everything gets popped. So, and then we dispose of it for them. So in this situation, there was no use, no reason to use high float and have that extra expense um, and time with our labor. Um, one of the questions that was asked was how were these topiaries um, attached? And this is a cool thing that you learn from different buildings. <laughs> these are actually the click click magnets. I love Robina with um, click click and my Magpul. What happens is in some buildings, and this is not all, but where this um, duct is overhead, where it comes to a corner, they use a metal strip in construction that goes right here to make that nice smooth corner. So you're going from um, sheetrock to sheetrock, and then they put this little metal strip there. And when they don't have too much paint and they don't have too much um, spackling on it, you can actually use a magnet still. So this is something you do have to test and know your event. So um, just to let you know, that's just something that you practice with time that you kind of go, hmm, that, that might be something that's magnetic there, and you check it out. Other times, it's not going to work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's that little metal strip that's right there underneath the paint. I love it. And it's one of those things that by looking at it, you'd have no idea it was there. Another thing, everybody's life experiences are different. My dad's um, father actually owned an electric and construction company. So I grew up um, learning about all that kind of stuff. So it was just something I knew to give it a try. All right. So these are all air filled topiaries. There's a string coming down from the ceiling. Um, so there's a magnet up here. There's a piece of uh, either the click click um, clear line or my um, mono line attached to this. And so those are all air filled and hanging down from the ceiling. All right. And yes, I always include a striking fee for every event we do. If they need us to come back, then they're going to pay for our staff to be there because it's the funniest thing. People don't like to work for free. So, um, the other thing is as I grew my company, I had people who would do the takedowns for me. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next part. When I was growing the relationships with the people who wanted to pay me more money, I found out that I get to know the people in the town that you wish to serve, all right? So if you say there's nobody with money in the town that you currently live in, then you need to find a town near you that you wish to service and that you don't mind driving to and get to know those people. If people like you, they will listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. That's by Zig Ziglar. So I wanted to make sure you understand that 
um, you are the person that makes those um, things happen. But you have to get out and meet the people in the town that you're wanting to serve. So do the people where you want to fish at, where you want to go for those big sharks, for those big accounts, do they know, like, and trust you? Okay, so what action can you take so the right people know, like, and trust you? This is a group question for you. So I'm asking everyone real quick, what action can you take with your business to go make sure that people, the right people, know, like, and trust you? Any thoughts? All right. So one person says, get involved in community events in your town. Love it. Networking groups, joining community groups and networking groups, work with a charity, be a part of a mom's group, and be a part of community events. Those are all wonderful answers. Some people, it works out great for them to join the Chamber of Commerce. Please know that not all Chamber of Commerce and not all business groups are created equally. So sometimes that is a great answer, sometimes not so much. <laughs> it depends on what's going on. And sorry guys, I just pushed a button. All right. So you want to make sure that when you are choosing your groups, that you go ahead and take time to go and kick the tires first. Please don't feel like you have to write that $200,000, $500,000 check to be a part of the chamber on your first meeting. You wanna kick the tires and see if it's gonna be the right fit for you and if they support the other members um, before you just join one of those groups. Um, so those are all great, great answers. Another way to get connected is through your kids' schools. That's how I found the people who work for me. And it's also how I started um, getting the schools to pay me, is I started by working at my own daughter's school and then getting other schools to work with. Ooh, and Sandra has a great one here. Also form relationships with your current customers. Because your current customers are the easiest people for you to work with and to grow more business with because they're already in your funnel. So cultivating those relationships is so key. All right, so good question. The question is, did you do stuff for free at the school at first? Here's what I did. I said, wow, I'm really excited to be on the PTA and find out that you guys are having a carnival every year. That's got to be exciting. What kind of decor do you all use? And they told me what they did. And they said, so what's your budget for that? And they'd be like, oh, 50 or $100. And I said, you know what? If you give party people that $100, I'll give you $250 or $500 of decor. How does that sound? I'll serve as an in-kind sponsor. So what happened is I still got money. It paid for my supplies, but then I donated my time as an in-kind sponsor. Hey, it's my daughter's school. I want to make it look good. I want her to have a fun time. But it allowed me to get great photos and be a part of the school because as a parent, I felt like it was important, important for me to serve on the PTA. My husband and I actually both served on it together. So that is one of the things that I did there. All right. So and in doing that, now I made sure that I was a vendor for the schools. So here's another note. Write this down. If you want to um, fish in the ponds with the schools, you typically have to make sure that you're an approved vendor. Okay? So to be an approved vendor, you've got to call the school board or the school and find out how that works for your area. Typically, you have to go get fingerprinted. Typically, you have to show proof of your insurance. And many times, you've got to put them on your insurance um, and have special wording put in. So that's something that you need to do the work for and take care of it. All right. So who are the people in your target market 
that have connections to a lot of people having events. All right, and Regina's ahead of me because she's already answered this question. What are the people in your target market that have connections to a lot of people having events? So, bakers, photographers, florists, the venues where the parties are held, the venue owners, other event vendors. You have to connect yourself with people who are already working with people who have the large checkbooks and that are having events because that's where more fish are swimming when my dad would go deep sea fishing he didn't go out looking for one shark or one grouper he wanted to have his cooler full so that when he came home he could fill up his freezer and have fish fries for multiple nights, not just a one-time dinner. So the same thing is, is if you're wanting your business to stay consistently busy and to have larger volume sales or repeat clients on a constant basis, you need to go where there's a lot of people having events and can get connected with those people rather than just do what's called one-offs. And a one-off is when you're just trying to find that one mom having a birthday party or that one company doing something. Find the areas that a lot of things are happening and then build relationships to connect with them. So here's a list for you. Country clubs, parks and rec department, because a lot of them have city buildings that they rent out, catering halls, catering managers, event planners, florists, rental companies, bakers, and so much more. Um, one person um, has gone after and talked with proms and weddings via the dress shop, because that's where a lot of people who are getting all dressed up for the events are going, and they're gonna trust what that person has to say. You can also go to a convention or visitor bureau in your area, talk to other event coordinators in your town and talk to like the president of the PTA and other people who are on the PTA or in organizations like the band boosters and things like that. All right. So what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit of a story. This beautiful home, what you're actually looking at in the picture is the pool house. <laughs> the home is behind it. They have this amazing uh, view of Bach Towers here in Florida. And the way I got to decorate in this beautiful home multiple times, it's one of my favorite clients that we work with, is through a high-end florist. That floral designer does amazing work for people who have really good budgets and entertain a lot. Now, the way that I got hooked up with that particular florist was through an event planner. <laughs> I heard about her, I stopped by her shop, left my cards, really didn't connect a lot, but it was okay. Then later on I did an event and they ended up collecting the um, framework for me. We got to talk a little bit more. Then later on we were involved in an, um, a really cool event at a art, show where we both created art. She created art out of flowers. I did it out of balloons. That took me to another level with her and she was able to see what amazing things could happen with balloons. From that, our relationship grew and I started working on events with her. And now because she knows, likes, and trusts me, she knew that whatever she ordered, I would do and follow through with. Other people vouched for me that I did a good job. She now knows that she can trust me to go into her client's amazing estate and do a good job without knocking over their antiques and being respectful of the staff and the owner of the home. So building those relationships with the right people is so important. This event was actually for the governor of the state of Florida. It was a fundraiser that um, the client was doing at her home. I got to stay for the event and enjoy cocktails and dinner and hobnob with the officials in our area and the political folks. 
and our sheriff and all that good stuff. And I had another person with me from out of state who was in town doing some balloon decor. So we worked together on the project. There was other balloons that we did in the home also, but the pool was just, to me, one of my favorite shots because I just love the look of it. The thing is, is when we do these jobs, we have to prep as much as we can ahead of time so that we're not invading on their space and making a mess. So that whole professionalism is so key. The other thing is for this particular event, I had to understand that the Secret Service was going to be there and to check us out and that they may ask me any question at any time. <laughs> and they also had me on site for the event because there could be some kind of issue that came up throughout the evening and they wanted it taken care of because it was such a high profile event. So as you work with your customers, Find out more about them and what their desired effect is of their event because this was something where they wanted it to look super nice because of who the event was for. So asking questions, building relationships, it all got me to be able to work on these projects. So things do not happen overnight with finding the right people and like I said, having um, the referrals from this high end event planner and the florist, it took time for them to see my work online. So I made sure that I had a really good website and that I had a really good blog and that I updated information on Facebook also so that people would continue to see my photos. So the number one thing I had to do was increase my skills. I made sure to get to every training that I can get to. I have been to balloon camp, world balloon convention, float, um, QBN tours, local um, groups that get together and do jams. I've been to Florida Super Jam. I have been to a lot of tours on how to twist and how to build deco twisting and how to increase my business. I do that because every time I go to a hands-on event, I learn something new. I meet really cool people that I'm also able to find out how they're building their business. And that gives me more confidence to come home and then sell what I've learned. So if you are struggling to get the right kind of clients and you have not invested yet in hands-on learning, you need to do that. The next step is to practice. Now, I'm not saying use tons and tons of balloons all the time, but if there's a technique that you learn online and you honestly don't know how to do it, then give it a try before you sell it to somebody else to do it. Or after you've sold it to them, practice it before you go to do it so you know if you mess it up and you need some help from somebody. You need to work hard. This is not an easy, easy business. I just, I have to throw that out there for folks. This did not happen overnight for me. I didn't start the balloon business one day and the next day have a major, amazing accounts. I had to build my reputation. I had to build my skill set. I had to build my confidence and learn how to sell. So the other part of that is I had to take action daily. I know so many people that say, oh, well, Joette, I posted on Facebook. Well, that's great. Who did you call today? Who did you go meet? What is something you did to make money? And we expect for the internet to do all the work for us. And yes, it is a huge help. And my goodness, having my blog brought me new clients from all over. But I had to take action daily to post those pictures. And in addition to that, I continue to go to networking groups. I continue to call people. I make follow-up phone calls, emails to my current clients. You have to work hard to continue to grow and to get the big fish. All right, let me read this real quick and see if there's anything I need to answer. Oh, great. This was a really good question. The question was, I'd love to get to the hands-on events, but what do you suggest to do until then, till they have the money to get to the hands-on events? So the number one thing that I look at is 
figure out how you can make the money. <laughs> is it that that's what you ask for for your birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, that your family will provide you with training because it's investing in you and your business? The second part of that, you might need to have a second job to get the money. Or the other thing is, is as you're building up your pricing for your balloon decor that you're selling, make sure that it's profitable and at the market price in your area versus trying to undercut people because you doing unprofitable balloon decor does not help you put money in the bank for going to training. But the second part is, is if you can't get to live events, um, I actually do have an amazing program. It's called Passport to Success, and it's a monthly webinar program where you get to hear from different people from all around the world. And right now for the month of April, I actually have a special where you can get the entire vault of all 31 of the past trainings for just $97 when you join the Passport to Success for $25 a month. So what I'm saying is for $122 today, you can have access to 31 old webinars and then get in the new webinars each month for $25 a month. So for me, I have found a lot of people who can't get to the regular events or just needs a lift me up and a boost between events. That really helps them. And Adam just said that that's a crazy awesome deal. And yes, it is because you buy them individually for $50 for a replay. And so you're getting $1,500 worth of training. So um, that is one way to get connected and get great tips on marketing. All right. So how many of you have rented a venue for a party or event? Go ahead and raise your hand or say yes. How many of you personally have ever rented a venue or a um, space for a party or event? You can do the little raise your hand thing. Oh, um, lower all the hands first, sorry. Yeah, you can raise your hand, <laughs> sorry. All right, yay, lots of people have done that. So what I want to ask you is if you have rented a space before, what was an unexpected expense or something unexpected from the contract that you had to sign? Because here's one here. There's a venue in town that doesn't allow anybody to have balloons. <laughs> so that's an, an interesting thing that um, they had changed. So by me keeping in contact with the venues, it allowed me to know that that would not be a venue that I would refer to my clients because I couldn't decorate there. Um, one of the surprises for people is how much money it would cost for the extra time to get into the venue ahead of time. Um, the fact that they couldn't bring any outside food, that there was a fee for cutting the cake there, like bringing your own cake. There was a corking fee for the wine. <laughs> so here's the thing, getting to know about the contracts in your area for the venues that you want to serve is important. So that you can come off as a professional. Here's a couple of examples. Our Parks and Rec Department, when you rent out the space, you're gonna say you rent it out from noon to 11 o'clock at night. Many of my clients think that means their party needs to end at 11. They didn't realize that, no, that means everyone is kicked out at 11, and if you stay any later than that, there is a huge fee that you're gonna get charged Plus, you're not going to get your $500 deposit back. And many times, clients, this is their first time ever renting a space. So if you know this type of information, you can ask specific questions when a client calls you up and says, hey, I'd like a quote for you to decorate the Magnolia building. You can say, great, what's your contract say? And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, what are your hours on your contract? And they'll tell me. And then I'll be able to explain to them with the decor that you're asking for, it's going to take us two hours to take it down at the end of the evening. Like if it's an elaborate fabric drape or something like that, I'd say it's going to take those two hours to take it down. So your party is going to need to end two hours prior to your contract ending. So DJ's last song needs to be at this time. The client is relieved that you know this information and it makes you set up to look like the expert because you're aware of what needs to go on in that situation. Does that make sense? That by you knowing 
information about how the contracts work there and the information about that building, it sets you up to be a professional versus just the balloon person. All right. So there are so many hidden expenses that often happen. And sometimes your clients are going to say, Joette, I would like a venue where I can bring in my own food because my Aunt Mary is a caterer and I want them to bring in the food and the cake and everything. And that way it gives me more money for balloons. Understanding what the rates are at the different facilities and who has that variety of allowing you to bring in your own stuff helps you get more money for your balloons sometimes <laughs> because they're not having to spend all the money on those excess expenses. On the flip side of that, if you understand the cost that when they go in for a convention, let's say, and they have to spend an insane amount of money on the food, then it's okay to have a really good profitable price on your balloons because they've already spent a lot of money. And if you go in too cheap, they're going to think it's not worthy. It's not going to be looking good because it's not in the right realm of pricing. I hope that makes sense. So um, you setting up to be professional, getting out and going to venues and finding out about their contracts and their um, flexibility. Because here's the other thing. Because I've built relationships with many of our local venues, even though my client's contract says noon to 11, I can sometimes say, hey, you know what? If you don't have a party going on the next day, would it be okay for me not to come out at midnight, but to come back and take down the decor on Sunday instead? Would you be all right with that? Because I've built a relationship with the venues, I can get away with that. If I didn't have a relationship with them and they didn't know, like, and trust me, then the answer would always be no. So these are the things that help you become successful and show yourself as a professional when you know this type of information and helps you become more profitable too because you wouldn't have to pay people extra money to be out late at night. All right, so know those rules and contracts, become an expert, and now educate your clients on the services that you provide. This was taken many years ago, <laughs> and this was our chamber having a community unity celebration and their logo were these people. They had no idea that I could make balloon people. But when I showed them, hey, look, out of linking balloons, we can make these awesome people with a 16 inch head and then do a 16 inch balloon with the collar underneath it, nice and tall so it doesn't block anybody's view of the podium and nobody's view of the screens is blocked. I was a professional. I knew that there was a 19 foot ceiling there and I knew what I could do in the space to make it look good within their budget and do something fun that goes along with their thing. I knew how to make this linking person because I went to a training where they taught me that. I then was able to talk to the chamber after they trusted me with some of their smaller events to say, you know, for me personally, I did decide to go into full event coordination. So if you would like me to do this event for a thousand people, we can take care of everything for you from ordering the sign, doing the fabric drape, and then I subcontracted a company to come out and do the linens under my directions. And I um, had the centerpieces created with the cutout swans. Again, another year with them, a thousand people seated at the dinner. Now, granted, there are not balloons at this event, but you know what? I was still able to make money. <laughs> so for me, I just want to show you that, yes, you can do those larger scale. With corporate account, ugh, when you go after corporate accounts, they are not spending money out of their own wallet. They're spending their company's money. So typically, there's more money to be had. By you knowing what the rental cost is for the venue and understanding that many of the times their food, their meals can be anywhere from $20 to $80 a plate just for the food. And at a convention, um, most of the convention centers, hotels, coffee is $50 a gallon. Okay. The other day I was looking at the retreat for promotions and profits in November. And if I wanted to get 
a cup of coffee, a bottle of water, a granola bar, and a piece of fruit for each person for like a morning time snack, that's $15 a person. Okay? So people are working with these type of numbers when you're working with corporate accounts. If you say that that seven to 10 foot column is only $50, it has no value because they pay $50 for a gallon of coffee. That's where I want you to kind of understand how things might be a little bit different because you're used to going to the McDonald's for your coffee for 99 cents <laughs> or maybe pay $2.50 for something at Starbucks or more. I don't know. I don't buy Starbucks. So remember, perception, where they're coming from and the money that they're spending on other things plays an important role in what you should charge for your decor and the type of decor that you're offering. Know what those clients' expenses are for their cake, their catering, photography, DJ, lighting, invitations, entertainment, and linens. Get to know those people in your area by networking so that you've grown this great base of people that know, like, and trust you and are referring out to people. But at the same time, while you're meeting those people, ask them for their price list so you're aware of what these things cost. Not everyone is your client. I repeat, not everyone is your client, and that is okay. <laughs> Please do not feel like you have to sit there and just make somebody be your client. Now, I do want you to learn some great skills on how to talk to people and deal with price objections, but no, if everyone says yes to your pricing, then your pricing is way too low. All right. So watch out what you wish for. <laughs> this is my next step from behind the scenes. If you are wishing for larger events, I need to know, do you have staff or outside contractors that are available to work with you? Do you have the equipment to produce a large build? Do you have the overhead, the money already in your bank, to pay for supplies if the client that you're working with has a net 30 or net 60 payment plan. Many times universities and corporations do not pay out for 30 to 60 days. Now there are some ways to get around that and be able to ask for credit cards and things, but I'm letting you know that many times these larger clients do have that kind of corporate policy. Schools often have where you um, wow, I can't think of the right name real quick. It just went off the top of my head or went out. With a purchase order. When you work with school systems, they often write a purchase order and it says, yes, we're going to pay you, <laughs> but you don't know when. So you want to make sure that you understand that sometimes working with these larger companies, you're going to have to have either a credit card to put the supplies on, or you're going to have to have money in the bank to cover things for that period of time. Do you have a vehicle to transport the decor or able to rent one? Do you have the correct liability and vehicle insurance to work in that venue? Because with the larger events, those corporations like a school, they're going to ask you to have over a million dollar policies. Many times it's not unreal for them to ask for two, three, or even five million dollar liability coverage to work in certain venues. So you need to be prepared for that. And then also there are some venues where they'll even ask you about your vehicle insurance to make sure you have the right kind of commercial policy and at a certain level. So be prepared for that. You need to have stamina to work long hours if you're gonna be putting on a big event. And then the other important part is you need to be organized and have enough organization to put together the order, the prep, figuring out all the timelines to do it. So here's one of my cautionary tales. I know so many people that when they get into the industry and they're working and they're delivering three balloons on a string a lot, or they're delivering five foot columns with a three foot topper, they feel like that's just something basic. But you know what? That's bread and butter. That is what pays your bills. When you go out and you work for these larger projects, it can be very time consuming and can be a royal pain in the booty. 
So I want you to be prepared that if you're going for these larger events, that you have these other things lined up or prepared to do it. And if you're not ready to expand at this point, there is nothing wrong with sticking to, hey, here are the things that I offer. I package one, two, and three. We can do up to 30 foot arches. We can do X number of centerpieces, and we can do this many columns. And stay within that frame and then target the fish in that pond. Not everybody has to go after corporate America. Not everyone has to go after the big productions. I just want to caution you that if you are, please be prepared to do that. All right. So I want to take you back to 2009. Nine years ago, I was excited to land my first $10,000 job. I prayed about it. I had written it down in my um, diary that that was a goal for me, that I could not wait to land my first $10,000 job. So I lucked out and the Haines City Citrus Growers were celebrating their 100th anniversary. And because I was a member of American Business Women's Association, and in 2008, I had had the opportunity to go to China with Melissa Vinson under the direction of Guido Verhoff because I helped Melissa win Designer of the Year in Vegas her first time around to make Designer of the Year. And part of her doing that was getting to be a part of this event that was happening in China. When I went to China, I took lots of pictures, I did a slideshow, and at American Business Women's Association, when they were having an event, people would come around and talk to me. And this one lady came up and said, Joette, that's amazing. We never knew with balloons, what could be done? I've heard great things about you, and that's exciting that you went to China. Do you think you could handle doing an event for me? It's a 100-year celebration. I want really great balloons but I also need centerpieces for a lot of the tables and I need it to be orange specific that really stands out to the orange growers. Do you think you can handle a $10,000 event? I'm like, yes, <laughs> I sure can. So she let me know right up front what my budget was or what her budget was and what her expectations were. And we did these two SDS walls. I had the custom printed, banners made, and then for the tables, we did what's called a tablescape. Nope, it's not balloons, but it made me lots of great money. I had a crew of three other people plus myself. We put these stickers on the boxes. We put the bows on top. I found these wonderful artificial oranges, and we had them um, copy off black and white photos of the 100 years to put around the tables to personalize it. It was a hit. People loved it, and I made a great profit. The reason that job happened is because that person knew, liked, and trusted me. Now, this is me and two of my three girls who helped me out at this event. It was a 50th anniversary at a um, office building in Tampa. Here was a fun thing with them. They don't let you bring helium tanks into their building. Something else to know about. Some places will not allow a helium tank to come inside of the building. So we had to inflate all the helium ahead of time and transport it in my trailer. And then um, we did our air filled decor on site. So they had these wonderful, fun people hanging out in the hallways. We did the 50s and we did a bunch of other topiaries and things outside. That client found out about me through seeing all of my work online that I'd worked really hard to tag everything I did with like anniversary, birthday. That's a whole nother class. But to go and do that job, I had to ask some really important questions. I had to make sure that I had the staff that could help me pull it off in the time frame because we had to go in overnight when the building did not have staff in it to get everything set up. And I had to make sure that I could meet the time frames that they had allowed for me to do that. So. What do I want you to do? I want you to invest in your business. I want to invest your time. Set yourself up as a business. If you're currently just dabbling in balloons, you can go look at my blog on ballooncoach.com and find out where it says, just type in the keyword hobby, and you'll be able to find a blog on how to transfer from being a hobby into a business. I'd love for you to be a part of our Passport to Success program on a monthly basis 
where you can hear from other professionals around the world on how they grow their business and other tips and hints to grow. I also have one-to-one -one coaching if you need. I want you to get connected in your community. People need to know, like, and trust you as the place to go and get their balloons from. Invest your time by reading, researching about the events industry and about being a business owner. One of my um, favorite books is The E-Myth. Um, if you haven't read that, I encourage you to do that. It'll change your perception and how you look at business. And finding out about the events industry, meeting these other people, checking things out online and reading other blogs, understand the events industry. I want you to invest in your education. The serious income comes from investing. Why are you trying to figure all of this stuff out on your own? If you're not sure where to start, come to my one-to-one -one coaching. It's on ballooncoach.com. I help you come up with a plan. If you just need monthly inspiration and golden nuggets to keep you motivated, join us the fourth Tuesday of each month at 9 p.m. to learn tips to grow your business. We have a variety of speakers. And then the first Monday of each month, you get a live Q&A action plan time with me. And you'll learn to take the steps, the things that other people have done who've built their business to $108,000 a year in three years, or people that have $500,000 companies, people who have million dollar companies, take the action steps that they've taken and, and apply it to your business. You get to hear from other people who are having success and help you on the journey. It's $25 a month. That is a way for you to invest in yourself. And Chital is saying that she loves the book E-Myth. It was a great read for small business owners. And I really agree with you. Thanks for the chiming in on that. Hands-on learning. Online learning is great. I've seen so many people excel in our industry and do things that are wonderful just by learning things online and then practicing it. But if you really want to make sure you're providing professional style decor, sizing, and having the best way to be efficient in running your business, getting to hands-on and interacting with other people and getting their tips and tricks, there is nothing else that can help in parallel to that. Practice the decor that you have struggles with and then use it for marketing pictures and then give it out, get people to experience your balloons. You've got to practice to have photos of your work and get to those hands-on classes. Networking with like-minded people will give you an I can do this feeling and a support system that you can lean on when you need. I'm telling you, the people that I have met in our industry since 2003 are my best friends in the world. I now travel to see them. My family calls them aunts and uncles, and they are my extended family. So I encourage you to get to that live training. All right, so now it's your turn to do some work. I need you to grab out your pen and your pencil. Are you ready? All right. What I want you to do is I want you to get out a pen and paper so that we can answer these questions. Um, oh, wow, Adam, thank you. Adam said, go to November's Profit and Promotions. This will be his third workshop with Joette, and it's a great way to learn. What I'm really excited about is over half the people who've already registered for our 75 spots that are available, half of the people that are registered are returning people that have been to some of our other live events. Um, so thank you, Adam, for the testimony. I appreciate that. All right, so here's what I want you to do is I want you to write this down. I want you to get out your paper and pen, and I want you to write down what is a venue that you've always dreamed of decorating in your area, okay? So what venue in the cities that you take care of, that you don't mind driving to to do decor, where is a venue that you've always wanted to decorate? Write it down. All right, the next thing I want you to do is what is a dollar amount that you wish to have from a single event? Like I had that $10,000 dream that was like, yes, I couldn't wait to accomplish that. So it can be $200, $500, it can be $50 if you haven't gotten any money yet from balloons. But what is a number? There is no wrong answer. It's your dream. Write it down on your paper. All 
All right, does everybody have their numbers? So everybody should have written down what is a venue you dream of decorating and what is a dollar amount that is a goal for you to get for a single event. And here's the thing, if doing a big event does not excite you, if that does not sound like your cup of tea, then you may be writing a goal of, I wanna do 10 $200 events a month. It may be you wanna do four $500 events a month. Everyone's goal with balloons is different. Many people work a full-time job and this is their side hustle. So you determine what that goal is. Please do not think you have to go after a $10,000 event if that is not your dream. You decide how your business runs and how it's set up. All right, so here's a question. What do you want your gross sales to be for 2018? I want you to write it down. Now, I know I'm going a little bit past the behind the scenes of working big events, but I honestly feel that this plays such a big role in it. When I changed my mindset of what I wanted my business to be, when I decided that I wanted my gross sales to be 100,000, and then when I wanted it to be 150,000, by writing those numbers down, it helped it happen. Okay, I currently now, from selling my business and working alongside of Jonathan Gerber with Party People Events, where we have a large crew working in Lakeland, Orlando, we service coast to coast, we did over 500,000 in sales last year. That was exciting. And now we're growing and we're reaching our sales goals that we had this year. We had our first quarter meeting and we are on goal for what we had set because we wrote it down and we're working together as a team focused on that. I know writing down your goals works. So whatever that number is, it could be $50, it could be $100, it could be a thousand, it could be whatever number you want it. But what is your goal for 2018? And now what I'm gonna ask you to do is tonight, before you go to bed, I want you to put that number in a place that you'll see it. So write it on a sticky note and put it on the wall over your computer. Put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it in your car. Put it somewhere where you're going to see that number every day so that you can train your brain on that's what you're going for. Think about it daily and take action to make it happen. This was an amazing job that I got to do, and in person it looked really cool because I kept changing the light on the clouds for these jet planes. This was for... Um, Publix, corporate, and other food people. The jet is made to fly fast, not to sit still on the ground. I want to know what fear are you willing to let go of and move past so you can reach your dreams? What action are you going to take to make your dreams reality? So if you have a fear of calling people, if you have a fear of going out and networking, you need to figure it out. I'm just gonna be that blatantly honest with you. You either need to figure out how to get past that fear or you're gonna to need to hire somebody like myself to go out and do it for you. Jonathan, networking is not his favorite thing to do, so I'm his marketing person still. 10 hours a week, I am on the phone, sending out messages, doing things on social media, calling people, contacting people, and going to meetings as party people to help our company continue to grow. So you either need to move past your fear and do it yourself or hire somebody to take care of it for you and write down what action are you going to take daily to make your dreams come true. All right, how are you doing guys? Have we gotten it? Give me a um, high five. Give me a hands up if you are writing down your goals and what fear you're going to pass up. Awesome. Way to go, guys. Woohoo! Yay. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'm telling you, writing stuff down makes it happen. All right. So think big. <laughs> this orange <laughs> was, this is Jonathan here with sunglasses on. And then Tierra is between he and I. She is our crew leader in Orlando myself and then Michael, one of our entertainers who also helps out with their core from time to time. 
because of building this large orange and helping him with the project as a competitor, Jonathan afterwards asked me if I'd like to sell my company to him. And I did <laughs> because I built a relationship with him. I knew, liked and trusted him and knew that he would make party people continue to grow and soar while I went for my dreams of ballooncoach.com. Ballooncoach.com was a theory, a concept that I had written down years ago. That is something that I dreamed of doing is helping give resources to our industry. I wrote it down and I made it happen. And now I'm part of a growing company that does over $500,000 a year. I love what I do and it is so much fun. So this is where I'm just showing you the power of writing things down happens. Now our team of nine took two days to do this event a couple of years ago in Orlando at a convention center. This was a huge project. We had three foot balloons helium filled with bases on the table and the collars. There were three foot to five foot balloons hung from the ceiling. There were crisscrossing string of pearl arches out of helium. And then every single one of these poles had linking balloons. This was the project that I was part of where we wrapped all these huge columns with linking balloons going up into the air. It was a phenomenal project to work on. But again, it was a team of nine people working for two days. Our office staff did a ton of planning ahead of time to make sure that we had enough product to finish the product and to have all these linking balloons work in all these columns. It was phenomenal to be a part. So when people tell me that people don't spend money on balloons, I say I disagree with you because I know they do because I have friends around the industry worldwide whose businesses continue to grow month after month because they are working hard and they are reaching out to the right people and fishing in the right ponds. So I'm Joette, bloomcoach.com, your partner in success. What I would encourage you to do is if you are not currently our Passport to Success member, is to start now and go to ballooncoach.com and sign up for a monthly subscription of just $25 a month. You can cancel that subscription at any time. It's not a contract, but you only get to keep what you pay for. So when you stop paying, you don't get to get any of the new trainings. Um, and then we do have that awesome um, program going on with the vault right now. If you need more questions on that, email joette at ballooncoach.com. I want you to understand that, oh wow, thank you, Danielle. She said the best investment for growing a business and that she really appreciates the wealth of information that comes out of the webinars. Our webinars are not just me. There are other people who do them and give you information and then I help follow up with you with the action plan. And I really enjoy helping our industry be able to have all that information at your fingertips. Thank you, Chital, for saying that she loves her Passport to Success membership and always looks forward to it. Lorena agrees with her, and Mary says it's worth every penny. I appreciate your testimonies, guys, because that's why I'm here doing Balloon Coach, is I learned over the years that there were pieces of the puzzles that were missing for our industry, and that's talking about really building a business and the pluses and the minuses of what do you want your business to look like? Do you want to go after the big fish and do these big projects where you've got to have nine people for two days? Or do you want to stick with those smaller events that's you know, $200 to $500, but do many more of them? The key is no matter which you want to do, you've got to make it connection where people know, like, and trust your business and do good work and follow up them, with them with customer service and quality. And Tuesday, the 24th of April is our webinar with Mindy, and she is going to talk about being organized and delivering things to your clients in a timely fashion and how to be able to be as efficient as possible. She is amazing. She is the most efficient person I've ever met on the planet, and I can't wait for her to give you some of her tips. So here's the thing. You sell what you share and you sell what you show. Our industry is so visual. When you go to a hands-on learning event, it allows you to grow your confidence and your skills to pull off awesome decor. 
every time I came back from a convention or a workshop, I would go to my clients like the universities and I would say, hey, by the way, did you know I could do this other stuff too? And I'm like, yeah, no, we didn't. And it allowed me to upsell every single time. I took the knowledge that I had, I shared it with my clients and they paid me more money. It's not a magical formula, it's just work. It's just taking action. You can do the same thing. So if you want to grow your portfolio and your confidence while networking with nine amazing instructors with 75 like-minded like -minded business owners, I want you to become a part of our promotions and profits program that's coming up. And I know Adam talked about it just a minute ago that this will be his third live event with me. It's called Promotions and Profits Retreat. It is in Orlando at Disney Springs, the Holiday Inn at Disney Springs. And you would be with us November 12th through the 16th if you want to do the bonus day. Our bonus day, we are going to do a bucket list item for me, and that is Disney Institute, Business Behind the Magic Tour. And we are going to find out the back scenes of Disney and their amazing branding and their leadership components and get to go places that only typically cast members go. It's a half day event on Monday, November 12th. You do not have to do the bonus day. You can just come in and be at the retreat from Tuesday through Friday. We are going to build four wonderful photo shoots so that you can leave with professional photography to help you sell the decor when you get home. Our online workshops are set up with promotions and profits to be January and June online classes. When you sign up in the month of April, you will get to have our replay from January's workshop on marketing, and you will then have a seat in our June live workshop on how to create a marketing plan to be proactive. In our June course, we'll be talking about marketing to schools and marketing for New Year's Eve. My goal is I want you to be making more money before you come to our event in November. So if you wanna get your seat now for Promotions and Profits Retreat, the limited seating is a real thing. 75 people working side by side with nine instructors, focus on how to sell what we create when you return home. We're gonna talk about real pricing. You can ask any of my instructors any questions you want. We have the style photo shoots to give you decor that you can sell. So it's a room set up with some pipe and drape and some lighting and a DJ and then the balloons around it. And so you get real photos of what an event would look like. You'll increase your confidence in creating that decor and being able to sell it at a profitable price. You'll see behind the scenes of Party People events and we're over $500,000 a year in sales. And I do wanna make sure I thank my sponsors, Anagram, Vitalik, Qualitex, Click Click, and High Float. They are all part of the event and helping out and I'm really excited about that. So I want you to share your successes and your tips. Anything that you learned from tonight or any of our past free webinars are our paid um, Passport to Success program. I wanna hear from you and share your stories with other people. I have an online magazine called Elevated.Events. It's on ballooncoach.com under resources, or you can just type elevated.events, and it'll get you right to that online magazine. I would love to know tips and tricks from you, or tips that you had and successes and things that you've put to place. Email that to joette at ballooncoach.com, and I'd love to highlight you in one of our future issues to help motivate and inspire others in our industry. Thank you so much for being a part of this behind the scenes. I want you to understand that not only does this behind the scenes go towards knowing about your clients, but also understanding a little bit about conventions and workshops. I have signed a contract for thousands and thousands of dollars that I'm on the hook for, for promotions and profits retreat at the hotel. Whether nobody signs up or not, I have to pay that bill. So when conventions are asking people to go ahead and sign up early and get your registration in, the reason for that being is we need to guarantee that those spots are gonna be filled so that we can pay the bill with the hotel. <laughs> being totally open and honest with you here. The other thing is, is when you go to any of the conventions and they suggest a hotel for you to stay at, 
The reason that they do that is we sign contracts with the hotel to guarantee a set amount of spots. So if you're planning to come into promotions and profits, you're going to want to go on to the website on ballooncoach.com, click on retreat, and go ahead and go down and reserve your hotel at the Holiday Inn Disney Springs so that you can be a part of our event and just walk down the stairs or go down the elevator to get to the venue. But again, any other convention you go to, these numbers that I talked to you about of paying for coffee and the amount of money for food, all those are real numbers. So take that into effect when you wonder why does training cost a certain amount? It's because that's what the cost is to go and be at a convention center or to be at a hotel with um, food that you have to use their food and not bring in outside sources. So I hope this has brought you full circle talking to you about being in your client's shoes, but also understanding what the producers of events go through in our industry and all these crazy hidden prices that are out there that we get to deal with. I would love for you to stay connected. And if you're not a part of our Facebook group called Balloon Coach Community, please go on to Facebook and ask to join. I'd love to be able to continue our conversation there. I'm so glad that you were part of today's webinar. And I want to go ahead right now and open it up for the people who are on live. If there are other questions that you have about what we talked about today, this is your time to ask those questions. Lots of thank yous, yay. So here's the thing, if you want to come to be a part of our webinars, you click on webinars on ballooncoach.com, go down to April 2018, where it's talking about Mindy Neal. And when you go down, it's gonna tell you all the extra bonuses about it. Go here to get passport to success. I'm doing this while I'm waiting on questions, guys. So if you have any questions, let me know. You click that you wanna subscribe and add it to cart, and then you can go ahead, and right now through the end of April, you can do the Passport to Success Vault for just 97. If you're already a Passport to Success member, send me a private message on Facebook or an email, and I'll get you a special link for you to use if you're already a member and wanna catch up on the webinars that were prior to you joining. If you're interested in joining us for live training and you want to hang out with us in Orlando with our nine amazing staff, you can find out all about our staff. We have Katie Byrne from Qualitex, uh, sponsored by Qualitex, Jonathan Gerber from Party People, myself, Eddie Hayland, being sponsored by Vitalik, Jan Ives being sponsored by Vitalik, Gary Ledbetter, from Dynamat Magic and Balloons in Montgomery, Alabama. We have Mindy Neal from Balloon Biz in a Box. We have Liz Romani from Valley Party Supplies. She's also sponsored in part by Vitalik. We have Cody Williams of Cody's Red Balloons. He is sponsored in part by High Float. And then Maureen Dyer is my wonderful logistics coordinator for the event. We are gonna be putting on amazing stage shoots. There's all the information about behind the scenes, our hotel, and our payment plans. Our six payment plan does expire on April 30th. So if you wanna take care of the bonuses and be able to spread out your payments, you'll want to go ahead and get that. If you're planning on attending, you do wanna go ahead and book your hotel now because we are in a tourist area and those rates can go up. I talked to you about our resources with Elevated Events. That's right there for you. If you wanna know more about coaching, click on coaching. And we even have downloads of how to make a lot of different items um, from the hot air balloon that I created to other costumes that other folks have made in the past. So feel free to go on to our downloads and check them out. All right, guys, I'm not seeing any other questions at this time. We also have a Decor 101 program for those of you who are new to the industry. If you're wanting to know some more in-depth information on how I've gotten established in the industry and some step-by-steps of how to make things from the get-go, that is your online resource for that. I appreciate you all taking your business seriously. The more we all step up our game, the more we each act professionally, and get to walk in our client's shoes, and understand the events industry, the better our industry gets. 
Network with people in your area that are other balloon professionals and entertainment. Network with the other people who are in our industry as far as DJs and event specialists. That's how your business will grow. I hope you all have an amazing day, an amazing and make 2018 great because each step you take gets you closer to your goals. If you'd like to share your goals with me, you can email them to joette at ballooncoach.com and don't forget to join Balloon Coach community. Thank you so much for being a part of our industry. You are in the right place at the right time.